The Untamable Dragon, written and narrated by Jelena Nickel, dedicated to the knight who tamed this dragon. There is a story once was told to very young from very old. Once fact, now fable thought to be, but it is true. Believe you me, it's details thus as you will see. Once upon a while ago, up on a mountain dipped with snow, there lived a delicate but strong dragon for her whole life long. She was quite big, not overweight, but all who saw her fought a faint. Her colors, modest rainbow tones, her spikes like orange traffic cones. Her scales would sparkle in the light, her eyes a vibrant calconthite. But most of all, she stood there sought by local men, a prize if caught. Amongst themselves, as they would drink, they talk about their plans. I think, said one especially proudful man, I think I could. Well, heck, I can. I'll go right up there, yes, right now, and harness her. I'll show you how. I'll traipse right through the hill and dale, this plan of mine. It will not fail. And off he went, right out the door. And after that, was seen no more. <laughs> the men, they started up again with theories, strategies, and then one quiet voice was heard come through, <clears throat> as if on signal or on cue, from a young knight that few there knew. gone up to say, how are you doing? How's your day? Perhaps she only wants a friend. She's all alone and up there, dand. Perhaps she'd simply like to spend some time just chatting in the end. This scrawny chap who'd spoken up was looked upon as a mere pup. He was quite short compared to them, his figure like an uncut gem. His eyes were sensitive and deep and seemed that they may easily weep. He had some hair, but not too much, and always had his sword in clutch. This pup-like lad, let's call him Jim, for no one knew the name of him, had silenced even loudmouth Jake who'd talk the icing off a cake or talk the water off a lake, who'd always yell, for heaven's sake, and lift his fist and rudely shake his coins and say, I need more steak. In turn, he'd make the rafters quake and cause your eardrums thus to ache. Yes, Jim's small speech caused verbal break. I think... I'll go up there quite soon, 
said Jim as he put down his spoon. In fact, maybe this afternoon. And with that, he slid off his chair and walked out into the fresh air. Now, as Jim headed up the hill, the silence that he caused hung still. The men were pondering Jim's skill. And after this lasted some time, the great speaker himself did chime. He'll never make it, spoke Sir Jake, and each head there nodded a shake. Began his noble quest, he checked his compass, heading west. Some supplies I think I'll need, including a good book to read. And with that thought, he found a store and bought a book, and some things more. Passing through the main town drag, he soon arrived at Dragon's Crag. The men would often gloat and brag of clamoring up its zig and zag. Jim whistled a fine traveler's tune and was quite shocked. It seemed too soon when he emerged atop the hill and saw her house. Oh my, his heart stood still. I, I feel I need to be more clear by her, I mean our dragon deer. And when I call her cave a home, it's cause it had a real nice dome shape to it. Uh, quite roomy too, although, it smelt a hint of poo. Too much detail. I'm so sorry. Let's just get back to the story. And so Jim thought as he arrived, no one who's been here has survived. I could be making a new friend or this could really be the end. But what the hey, I'll take the risk. If I'm to die, it'll be real brisk. Resisting thoughts of being fried, he took a step or two inside. Mm. Then with a gulp of air, he cried, you really shouldn't be so snide. Your door is open up real wide. Almost as if you'd give a ride to anyone who needs a guide. Uh, dare I suggest, he boldly plied, that we should take a jaunt outside. He figured humor should be tried, and sure enough, it got him eyed. When her gaze upon him spied, he lost his nerve and planned his glide. When all a sudden something sighed <sighs> and paused a moment, then replied, Is it for answer that you bide? Your humor stinks, she vilified. And at that moment in her head, we would have heard these words be said. If this is Fred, I'll blast him dead. He's come before, but then he fled. I'll fill him with my fear and dread. My flame will blow, my claws will shred. But then she took a closer look, and hiding in a small cave nook stood one small man who clutched a book. Are you friend or just a crook? Questioned the dragon, poised to cook. His eyes are sensitive, she thought. And if he meant harm, he'd have fought me right away, right on the dot. Plus, he looks nice 
not too hairy. And is that a small tear I see? Although, that clutching, sordid hand may quickly get him crisply tanned. But then her reflexes kicked in. What is he doing in my den? He should get out, go home, be gone. He had a sword. It would be drawn, and very soon he'd gain his brawn. I'll be his trophy before dawn. She started getting huffy then, thinking, He's trespassed in my den. I'll eat him. No, I'm not hungry. I'll roast him! No, that smells like pee. Oh, I know how he'll leave me be. I'll smoke him out so he can't see. He'll stumble off a cliff, will he, and tumble down into the sea. Then I will once again be free. Yes, yes, that's good. Good thinking, me. Then to her came a calming thought. Maybe her fear was all for naught. If he began to misbehave or turned out just to be a knave, there's still a way that she could save her tail. Why, she could leave her cave. She would not have to be his slave. And in this thought, she felt quite brave. (sighs) And with a puff and breath of air, she looked at him and said and stared, You seem to be a nice little chap, although this all could be a trap. This is something quite new for me. I've never been outside, you see. I'll go with you. I'm not afraid. And really, you are quite outweighed. The knight agreed, and they went out. Not hand in hand, but arm on snout. They had a grand old time out there, until they ran into a bear. But that was ended quickly with a little breath and fiery sniff. In case you're wondering what went down, they never did return to town. At which the barman turned a frown and Sir Jake cried, She took him down. Most assumed a death occurred, but something even more absurd had taken place atop that hill. Both Jim and Dragon chose at will to face their fears and not to kill. Instead, they led a happy life, living man and scaly wife. Now, I feel I need to interject before your eyes roll in your neck. This is a different type of story. No claim to fame or quest for glory, no mutilation, nothing gory. Just too in life who fell in love. What more should a story be of? The Untamable Dragon was written and narrated by Jelana Nichol and produced by Jeremy Ugro. 
Musicians include Felix Flores, Grant Garrett, Brittany Iwanchewski, Dennis Kwok, Jelana Nickel, and Tim Rathjen. Original music and foley by Jelana Nickel. This story was recorded by Brandon Wells and mixed and mastered by Selena Fiorini. The Untamable Dragon is a production of Jelana Creative. Copyright 2020.